So for those of you who are, are joining us on YouTube a little later in the day, my apologies, but you missed the first half of the service because I forgot to hit the record button. But you're going to get a little bit, a, a, a really quick Christmas service. So um, I was just explaining that I, I want to read this, um, this uh, chapter from Ken Geyer's book, Moments with a Savior. And this is called An Intimate Moment with Mary and Joseph. And, and, and I, I read this because uh, I, I feel like Ken Geyer has a way of writing that reminds me that this happened. You know, sometimes we talk about the birth of, of the Savior in this kind of, it's, it's, a, it's a miracle and it, it's almost otherworldly. And we revere it and, and it should be something that we revere. But sometimes we forget that, that it, it happened. It, it, there's, there's a certain... Um, normality to it. Children are born every day. And I feel like the way he writes this just makes the story very real for me. So for the census, the royal family has to travel 85 miles. Joseph walks while Mary, nine months pregnant, rides side saddle on a donkey, feeling every jolt, every rut, every rock in the road. By the time they arrive, the small hamlet of Bethlehem is swollen from an influx of travelers. The inn is packed. People feeling lucky if they were able to negotiate even a small space on the floor. Now it is late. Everyone is asleep and there is no room. But fortunately, the innkeeper is not all shekels and mites. True, his stable is crowded with his guests' animals but if they could squeeze out a little privacy there, they were welcome to it. Joseph looks for, over at Mary, whose attention is concentrated on fighting a, a contraction. We'll take it, he tells the innkeeper without hesitation. The night is still when Joseph creaks open the stable door. As he does, a chorus of barn animals makes discordant note of, makes discordant note of the intrusion. The stench is pungent and humid, as there have not been enough hours in the day to tend the guests, let alone the livestock. A small oil lamp lent, by, lent them by the innkeeper flickers to dance shadows on the walls, a disquieting place for a woman in the throes of childbirth. Far from home, far from family, far from what she had expected for her firstborn. But Mary makes no complaint. It's a relief just to finally get off her feet. She leans back against the wall, her feet swollen, back aching, contractions growing harder and closer together. Joseph's eyes dart around the stable, not a minute to lose. Quickly, a feeding trough would have to make do for a crib. Hay would serve as the mattress. Blankets, blankets, ah, his robe. That would do. And those rags hung out to dry would help. A gripping contraction doubles Mary over and sends him racing for a bucket of water. The birth would not be easy, either for the mother or the child. For every royal privilege for this son ended at conception. A scream from Mary knifes through the calm of that silent night. Joseph returns breathless, water sloshing from the wooden bucket. The top of the baby's head has already pushed its way into the world. Sweat pours from Mary's contorted face as Joseph, the most unlikely midwife in all Judea, rushes to her side. The involuntary contractions are not enough, and Mary has to push with all her strength, almost as if God were refusing to come into the world without her help. Joseph places a garment beneath her, and with a final push and a long sigh, her labor is over. The Messiah has arrived. Elongated head from the constricting journey through the birth canal, light skin as the pigment would take days or even weeks to surface, mucus in his ears and nostrils, wet and slippery from the amniotic fluid, the son of the most high God umbilically tied to a lowly Jewish girl. The baby chokes and coughs. Joseph instinctively turns him over and clears his throat. 
Then he cries. Mary bears her breast and reaches for the shivering baby. She lays him on her chest and his helpless cries subside. His tiny head bobs around on the unfamiliar terrain. This will be the first thing the infant king learns. Mary can feel his racing heartbeat as he gropes to nurse. Deity nursing from a young maiden's breast. Could anything be more puzzling or more profound? Joseph sits exhausted, silent, full of wonder. The baby finishes and sighs, the divine word reduced to a few unintelligible sounds. Then for the first time, his eyes fix on his mother's, deity straining to focus, the light of the world squinting. Tears pool in her eyes. She touches his tiny hand and hands that once sculpted mountain ranges cling to her finger. She looks up at Joseph and through a watery veil, their souls touch. He crowds closer, cheek to cheek with his betrothed. Together they stare in awe at the baby Jesus, whose heavy eyelids begin to close. It's been a long journey. The king is tired. And so with barely a ripple of notice, God stepped into the warm lake of humanity. Without protocol and without pretension, where you would have expected angels, there were only flies. Where you would have expected heads of state, there were only donkeys, a few halter cows, a nervous ball of sheep, a tethered camel, and a furtive scurry of curious barn mice. Except for Joseph, there was no one to share Mary's pain or her joy. Yes, there were angels announcing the Savior's arrival, but only to a band of blue collar shepherds. And yes, a magnificent star shone in the sky to mark his birthplace, but only three foreigners bothered to look up and follow it. Thus, in the little town of Bethlehem, that one silent night, the royal birth of God's son tiptoed quietly by as the world slept. I just read that as, as a reminder, um, you know, that this, this story is real and it's real to us. And, and, and I, I particularly like that line that, that in the birth of Christ, God stepped into the warm lake of humanity. Uh, this is the reminder for us this Christmas morning that, that Jesus's birth is, 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 is God coming close enough for humanity to touch God. This morning, God is close to us. And, and, and I, I want you to all just take some time, whatever may be going on, to celebrate that this morning, that God, that God has been born into your life. May that be a blessing to you throughout the day. Uh, I want to take just a moment to invite everyone, anyone who wants to, to share what it is about Christmas this year in particular or in general that brings you joy. Uh, maybe, it's, maybe it's a tradition or just something that happened this year that's specific to this year. Uh, is there anyone who just wants to share where, they're, where they are finding joy this Christmas? And I'll, I'll give you an example. Um, I've already been up baking this morning. One of the traditions that we, we were sharing with, with Will and Cheryl uh, just a, mm -hmm. yesterday or two days ago, a few years ago, we started the tradition of making a, a Norwegian dessert called Kransakake. And so uh, I, I found some joy in, in rolling out the, the, the dough this morning and getting, getting ready to, to build the Kransakake cake. So that, that's a new tradition for us. We're glad to be able to celebrate it with our daughter and son-in-law who are now living in Poughkeepsie. Oh, wonderful. Is, that, is this the first year that they're living here? First year, first year in about 35 years, yes. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> yeah. So happy for you two, for all of you. Very nice.
So anyone else who wants to share? Looks like Will's making the long trek over from the couch. The, the first is, is just the, the joy of, of spending time with family. Uh, my brother typically hosts Christmas and of course we missed it last year. Um, but I think we have not seen his daughter, Megan, and her boyfriend, Elias, since Thanksgiving of 2019. So seeing them today, later today will be one of the joys. But it dawned on me with technology, I could probably show you Fiona. Oh, <laughs> look at that. Oh, this is your, your present, this is your video. Unboxing. Yes, yes. Oh, you, how old did you say she is? She'll be 14 months on the 30th. Boy, she's a trooper with that un unwrapping. Pretty impressive. And that's, that's Fiona with her dad. Aw, nice. And... Whoop. There, we go. there she is, holding the present. Aww. With the post-it post notes saying, don't open till Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> oh, very good. But it, it's it's very much just the the, the, the joy of, of being able to spend time with family. Wonderful, wonderful. Anyone else? Well, we're gonna sing a few more songs together. And I am, I, uh, please don't take any offense to this, but, uh, oh, you're all muted anyway, so I don't need to mute anyone. Um, okay. All right. So we're going to start with the song, The First Noel. We're going to sing three verses of this. <clears throat> certain poor shepherds in fields as they lay, in fields where they lay keeping their sheep on a cold winter's night that was so
next song is not one that I, I think of as one of the more traditional um, Christmas songs, but it is one that I really like. Love came down at Christmas. second verse again. Love shall be our token. Love be yours and love be mine. Love to God and all men. Love for plea and gift and sign. So we got one last song that we're going to do, but before that, I just want to thank you uh, for, for taking the time to join us this morning. Um, I want to wish you a Merry Christmas, wish that, uh, just share my hope that this is a truly blessed day for you and your family, however you celebrate it. Uh, eat a lot of yummy stuff, have fun opening presents, and just send a lot of love into the world today. And of course, we're going to end with joy to the world. And we're going to sing all the verses to this one. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas. Have a wonderful Merry day. Christmas. Merry Christmas. You know what? All your small stuff. Merry Christmas and early steps. Oh, wow. Oh. <laughs> Merry Christmas, all. Thank you Merry, Christmas. Merry, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Have a wonderful day.